welcome back welcome back i hope you are enjoying my the morning so far because we aim to bring you uh good vibes and inshallah at least start off your week on a good note and for that matter we have an interesting discussion on politics we want to talk about the impact of the finance bill and the budget on the youth with you and me and for this interesting conversation we have been joined by uh caleb ikenye who's a regular not a guest anymore from uh university of nairobi he's a law student there he's also the president of the nakuru county student caucus karibu sana caleb asante sana glad to have you again first time we are interacting but you've been here before yeah it's a pleasure all right. Yeah. So we want to talk about uh, the finance bill and the budget. What do you make of what has been approved so far? Okay. On my end, I feel like uh, we are still living in a very unfortunate times. Mm -hmm. Most Kenyans are still being, you know, they are being pressed. They are being pressured by the financial constraints that uh, we are seeing uh, occurring mm -hmm. in, in our country. Okay. But all in all, we remain hopeful that uh, better days are coming. Okay, better days yes. are coming. Yeah. We, we indeed hope that yeah. that's the case. So now, uh, with the finance bill having uh, passed the, la the last week and also the budget having been read, do you think that we are headed the right direction? How, how is the situation? What do you picture in the coming days? Okay, thank you. I would want to relate to your question to some of the principles that were developed by Adam Smith mm -hmm. that uh, we always call them the principles of good taxation. Uh, they are uh, convenience, simplicity, mm -hmm. fairness and efficiency. Mm -hmm. So as I'm answering that question, we try to relate is the budget that was developed or rather presented to Kenyans just recently, is it in line with those principles? So once uh, we try and uh, figure <laughs> it out, or rather relating that with, uh, with the budget presented to the people, then we can, you know, judge it. Okay, what yeah. do you judge? Now that I, I assume you have already passed, you know, uh, compared it to, to that, um, you know, principle. And yeah. what, do you, is it simple? Is it... <laughs> okay. Uh, you think... Mm -hmm. In my own, in, in my own opinion, and in my own view, I will, uh, you know, try to reason it out that uh, the budget is so strenuous. The budget is not, uh, you know, economically friendly to those people who are at the bottom of the pyramid. Mm -hmm. But all in all, uh, as I said, we yeah, look hopeful. for better days. <laughs> better days are coming. <laughs> yeah. And do you think that it was necessary because now the president still insists, even on this paper that we've just read today, the president still insists that there is no other way to uh, help the country other than to increase on the taxation. Do you think that this was uh, unnecessary, you know, something that was unpreventable, like there was no other option other than to increase on the taxes? Okay, this is what I'll say. Mm -hmm. that the finance bill is a very, very, very wonderful idea for us as Kenyans. Mm -hmm. But now the problem comes in, it is not in regard, or rather it does not have that uh, mm -hmm. regard for time. It is not timely. These are not the times when we would want to inflict, you know, economic pain, economic pressure to Kenyans. Mm -hmm. but of course, uh, I think that the finance bill is a good idea. It has its positivities it has its negativities. Yeah. But as we look at it, we realize that the negativities, the economic negativities, you know, to the common mwanainchi, there are so many. They mm -hmm. outweigh the economic positivities. I would want to, to invite you to reason this way. Okay. That uh, one of the most taxed countries in the world is, uh, there is Netherlands, there is France, there is uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, s some sort of, uh, you know, those high economic powers, mm -hmm. those superior powers. But now the problem comes in, people from those countries, they can even be taxed 50% of their salaries, but their taxes, they can be accounted for. The problem in Kenya is that a common mwanainchi, a civil servant, will be taxed way too much higher, but that tax cannot be accounted for. We cannot feel that 
we do not feel like mm -hmm. our tax is being you know being put to work the way we expect it to be you know utilized yeah so that is where the problem comes in uh, you see uh, when you say that a civil servant will 1.5 uh, percent of their salary will be deducted so that it will go to housing you know those housing levy. initiatives mm. and it's not a levy right now it's a tax by the way mm -hmm. and it can't be refunded yeah it cannot no. be refunded so if you tell me that my salary or rather my parents sal salary who is a civil servant will be deducted by 1.5 percent remember she has loans remember she has to pay rent remember she has to you know to pay fees for mm -hmm. other siblings so it's just strenuous it's not timely and mm -hmm. uh, i think we need to review uh, you know the contents of this revised bill but one thing that makes me happy is that uh, in as much as uh, we had uh, you know that contest in parliament last week it's still in the we are now headed to the third reading meaning it's not over until it's over yeah it's not over yet yeah. uh, this week we are possibly going to see how how it will go yeah. but most likely we the situation that we are foreseeing is that it will pass yeah because of the votes and everything, only a, a few changes can be made at this instance. So do you think now, um, with if in the event that it passes and the president signs it, having that he's backing it, do you think that it will really provide employment? Because that's why the president was also saying the finance bill is set to create uh, employment. This is also on, uh, uh, let me just read it. On page four, the main read is finance bill will unlock jobs. And uh, he was saying this in Western Kenya. He maintains that the only way out of the country's heavy debt and grow, uh, grow economy is through taxation. So uh, his promises is that the government will lay out 100,000 uh, kilometers of fiber optics besides 25,000 Wi-Fi hot hotspots across the towns to enable youths access digital jobs. Also, um, the finance bill will soon be tabled in Parliament, seeking the writing off over 5 billion debts owed to Mumias, Nzoya, Sony, Muhoroni, and uh, Miwani sugar farms. So, do you really foresee this happening, the job opportunities, apart from now uh, in the construction? Because that's one of the areas that he says uh, will have job opportunities now. He's saying that there'll be more opportunities in the digital space and also uh, by him reviving Mumias, trans, uh, you know, and uh, Zoya Sugar and Mohoroni, that more job opportunities also arise from that sector. Okay, uh, thank you. Let me first start by responding to how, 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 what you said, mm -hmm. that, uh, okay, we can predict that the finance, b the, the finance bill will see the light of the day, but... Uh, in regards to the same, it's not over until it's over. Mm -hmm. uh, I would want to, to state that uh, in as much as uh, the members of parliament have been delegated, we have delegated, we as the sovereigns have delegated our powers to the, member, to the members of parliament mm -hmm. to make such kind of decisions on our behalf, we still can, you know, corner ourselves to the provisions of Article 1 of the Constitution, that all power belongs to the people. And that is why mm -hmm. uh, most Kenyans, you know, uh, we are also awaiting to hear from uh, what the Azimio faction, or rather the Azimio coalition, are going to react to the same. Mm -hmm. Because uh, we must also have people who are going to fight for what is not, you know, friendly to the people. Mm -hmm. So in as much as uh, it might sail through the, the National Assembly, will also want to see how it's uh, how people or rather how the other faction of the opposition is going to react on the same okay. uh, on issues to do with the employment i have one problem with the finance bill uh, and most particularly on uh, the housing issue the mm -hmm. housing uh, initiative let me ask you you've employed a uh, hundred young people a hundred youths mm -hmm. in a construction site uh, maybe we say for six months or even one year so after that one year, where will those youths go to? Mm -hmm. After that, constructions, after the engineers, the contractors are through with that site, where are they going to go to? Okay. After we are done with these housing initiatives, because it's not, we are not going to build houses for 100 years, we are not going to build houses for 50 mm -hmm. years. How are we trying to sort out the issues of unemployment 
amongst our youths. Exactly. Yeah. So what is it? It's not, it might not be as sustainable. It's only but a short term solution. It's mm -hmm. a painkiller to the issues that we are facing. Okay. You give me 600 every day and then after a year, you cut off that, uh, you know, payment or rather where I'm supposed to be working. Mm -hmm. I'm supposed to come to that construction site every morning, every morning, every morning. Then on December, at the end of the year, I'm told from January, as you can see, the, house, the houses are done. Thank you for your services. So we have not really tried, solved the yeah, problem. Yeah. So we right. really mm -hmm. need to look at the long term solutions. Mm -hmm. And this now what Kenyans are not like delving into. We really need to have proper public participation mm -hmm. because up to now we have not experienced that. Mm -hmm. Kenyans do not know what that finance bill means. Yeah, it, yes. many Kenyans are still complaining about it and many people have said it's not quite clear. You know, people have not really bought the idea yet and especially um, with the amendments that was done by the committee, it being uh, reduced to, from 3% to 1.5%. Does it make sense to you? Because what people are also saying is that now that it has been reduced, it will take someone even more years before they get a house. So is that really realistic? What am I giving my money for if I, you know, if I won't get it in my lifetime, probably the 10th, you know, what generation, God knows, you know, which one will get the houses. And still also still unclear if a, a husband and a wife, they're being both cut uh, of this money. So who will get the house at the end of the day? Will they have two houses? What do you make of it? <laughs> You know, one very funny thing, another funny thing about this finance bill mm -hmm. is that they promise us that uh, after 1.5% is cut from my salary or rather from a civil servant's salary, then uh, you start paying, I think, is it a mortgage or something to do with that? Mm -hmm. So uh, you are going to own a house, I think, after, okay, let's even say 50 years. Am I assured that I'm going to get that house? I might not be there to live in that house, then these are basic things or rather basic elements in life. Mm -hmm. I can choose to rent a house. I can choose to build my own house. That is a basic element that the government should not, you know, delve into. Yeah. There are certain decisions that I as a person, I need to make for myself. Okay. Uh, if it's, you know, the issues to do with the government encouraging saving, the government should try and convince us it should not compel us mm -hmm. to save. Since when did the government, you know, delve into, uh, you know, uh, encouraging or rather uh, compel save. yeah, compelling mm -hmm. citizens to save? No, that's my personal initiative. Okay. So I think more and more we need to review this finance bill. Mm -hmm. Let it not be compulsive. You know, one very funny thing, if we make Kenyans understand we should not force it on people. We just make them understand. Then we, sh we, we could have been talking about another story. Mm -hmm. But now these are cases where it is being compelled. Okay. Yeah. So it, it, can't, it shouldn't work like yeah. that. And that is why I would also mm -hmm. invite you to remember that even in the Uhuru Kenyatta regime, they also had this housing initiative. Exactly. They also had these uh, taxations. But now it did not succeed mm -hmm. because of ignorance to these small, small facts. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And now, uh, again, still on the amendments that were done, I want to, you t just a breakdown of it for the youth to understand how that's impacting them. So we have, um, so one that was maintained was the, um, sorry, sorry, um, let me get to it. Um, no, not on mobile data. There's the 3% turnover tax uh, that previously targeted people earning who had a turnover of 1 million to 50 million, 15 million. And now it's the, it has been reduced to people with a turnover of 500,000 uh, in a year. And that affects even the small, medium enterprises mm -hmm. business because this is not taxation on profits but on, on turnover. So for an SME watching, how does this, you know, break it down, how does this affect the business? Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Every government in any state or even in any, okay, in our situation, even the county governments mm -hmm. should always endeavor to empower 
its subjects. Mm -hmm. It should never endeavor mm -hmm. to suppress the existence of their subjects. Mm -hmm. But in our current state, even a mamamboga is going to be taxed. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, these are the small and medium enterprises. So if you are going to tax, to tax even those ones who are not, you know, surviving, those people who are surviving, you know, surviving is, you know, I wake up. You're barely making it. Yeah, you're barely making you know, it. The next meal, yeah. Yeah, these are people who the government, in fact, needs to be loading without interests. Mm -hmm. But now when we see that the government is trying to suppress their economic, uh, you know, endeavors, mm -hmm. it becomes so very unfortunate. And we shall not be headed to the right direction. So I'm even trying to ask myself, because I personally am a student, you have increased the taxes. I have taken loans from help. So once I'm employed, as a, after I'm done with my studies, hopefully, yeah. once I'm employed, there are taxes waiting for me. There is a loan waiting for me, which is accumulating, is accumulating a very huge interest rate. Mm -hmm. So it is very unfortunate. Every single part of the country, even those people who do not, uh, uh, those people who are supporting these, uh, you know, these clauses, these, uh, the whole provision of the finance bill, yet they do not know what it entails, mm -hmm. should now come back to their senses and try, you know, to find logic. Where is the logic? At the same time, the members of parliament, the lawmakers, the legislators, they should be ready to listen. Mm -hmm. You know, in one way or another, I'm trying to feel like uh, the finance bill is a political, uh, you know, it's a political driven process. Okay. That is why we are having contests in parliament. Mm -hmm. We are not having people listen to each other. The president is saying that I would want to see those ones who are going to vote against it. You know, that, that is a form of defilement to democracy. Okay. Let people speak up. Let people try and uh, give their consenting mm -hmm. views about the same. Because okay. this is an issue that affects all of us. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. But when you say that um, the, the president, how he spoke, uh, he wants to see those who wouldn't vote against it, and people really spoke ab about it. And, uh, but but we, at the end of the day, we also saw people from opposition voting for it. So do you still feel like it's politically instigated or it's just, you know, something that the president is trying to push for? Uh, I am very much convinced that uh, these are very, you know, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a politically driven policy mm -hmm. uh, because uh, you see members of parliament in the television arguing it out that, uh, you know, we are marshalling support for the same. Uh, we are trying to, like the, 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 the other day, uh, I had Honorable Silvana Sosoro, I think he's a majority whip in the National Assembly, mm -hmm. trying to say that... Uh, we are even trying to reach out to th those members of the Azimio faction. This politics. So, how mm -hmm. are you going to, to, to argue it out that this not it's not a politically driven process? It's okay. a politically driven process. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, they want to, you know, to, to show that, uh, of course, these are policies that uh, will better the lives of Kenyans. But inside it, there is an ingredient of politics being played before Kenyans. Okay. Yes. All right. Uh, let me now take you back again mm -hmm. to some of the things that, to the other things that are amended in the bill. We have betting. Uh, many youths uh, bet. Uh, we know that for a fact. Now, the levy will be increasing from a lower base of 7.5% at what it is at present to, is it 12.5%? So what does that mean to someone who, who does betting? Okay, uh, you know, in as much as, uh, again, uh, I, 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 as I started by saying that uh, the finance bill has its positivities mm -hmm. and it's, it has its negativities. So what you're talking about is mm -hmm. something that uh, we can call part of its positivities. Okay, so this uh, is a positive there, thing. Yeah, this mm -hmm. is a positive element uh, because uh, you, you, you realize that most of our youths, mm -hmm. they are really suffering from this menace. Of course, betting should be done responsibly. And mm -hmm. uh, we have always seen it in our televisions through advertisement that it should be done responsibly. But in the long run, we don't have regulations on the same. Mm -hmm. After I'm 18 years, I can just start betting. I have a phone, I can just start the process. So 
the, I think the government is trying to regulate. There was mm -hmm. previously, there was no, uh, we did not have that structured mechanism of regulation on betting. But I think the finance bill, being part of one of the positivities of the same, is trying to regulate this as a vice mm -hmm. amongst the youths. Because okay. we've had youths killing themselves uh, after they have lost bets. Uh, we've had youths who have even, you know, Mm -hmm. uh, delved into crime and in Mekosa Pesa I decide let me get into you know uh, you know things to do with uh, thuggery uh, mm -hmm. you, you you decide to to start you know money laundering so that you at least you can sustain that concept so I think okay. in one so or it's another a, it's a good thing because at least it prevents people from yeah. you know constantly or being addicted to betting because yeah. there's that cost implication involved yeah all right, so now on uh, pay, pay as you earn. Um, uh, now, uh, and okay, um, the new pay uh, tax ban has been introduced covering earners of between 500,000 and 800,000 a month at 32.5%. And then earners with the gross salaries above 800K will pay a higher pay tax of 35%. Well, the earlier proposal uh was that earners above five hundred thousand you know subjected to thirty five percent pay rate currently they pay thirty five percent so what do you what do you make of this is this fair enough okay i will still want to i will still want mm -hmm. to invite you to the same same words and the principles by adam smith that one of the most basic principle is fairness fairness mm -hmm. taxation should have that basic component of mm -hmm. fairness there is a certain legal principle for taxation i think it's called the principle of uh, aggregate sacrifice mm -hmm. that taxes should be derived from those people who have less utility for money so in as much as this man or rather this lady earns 500,000 shillings or whatever kind of amount is her utility to the money comparable to the taxes that you want to exhume from that person? Mm -hmm. So I think this will call out for uh, it calls out to you know that the, the the intentional the committed financial experts mm -hmm. to try and advise the government that in as much as we want to increase the tax base, we must also be considerate so that we do not suppress our subjects. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, KRA, uh, they are driven by another, uh, by, by a very famous principle, to lipe ushuru to jitegeme. Lakini tutalipa aji ushuru to kose kujitegeme. Okay. Yeah, we need to we also, need to in as much as we are paying taxes, we also need to be dependent on ourselves. Mm -hmm. I need not, as a citizen, to depend on the government for everything. The okay. government should also, you know, try and uh, leave some, uh, you know, percentage of my money, yeah. um, of my salary, to sustain mm -hmm. me, my family, my basic needs, you know, yeah. Okay, all right. Yeah. What, what about, what then about the VAT tax on fuel products? It's been, it's being increased from 8% to 16%. Mm -hmm. What does that, that mean to an ordinary Kenyan? Okay. Uh, you realize that uh, once you, you, you just Mm -hmm. ignite a debate on fuel or rather once you just mm -hmm. uh, ignite an impact on issues to do with fuel and gas then uh, you know mm -hmm. fuel controls a larger part of the economy if I don't have fuel today I'll not be able to go for an interview if I if my vehicle does not have fuel today or rather the ambulances that we have in the county governments they are not going to offer service services to the common mwananchi so if you add the VAT that means that the prices will shoot so basically almost everything in the country will the, all the prices of the products everything will, will erupt every will you come to work if they have the, the you know how how much do you pay from home to here, around 100 bob or 80. So once the, mm -hmm. the, the fuel prices are hiked, mm -hmm. meaning the, uh, the, the, the prices, the bus fares, they are also hiked. Okay. Meaning it will have a negative impact to your career. It will mm -hmm. have a negative impact 
to you know to mm -hmm. your daily you know activities so this means that uh, mm -hmm. of course uh, the VAT introduced by the government and as it has been stipulated in uh, you know the finance bill mm -hmm. it is not friendly it is not friendly okay. and that is why in as much as uh, we would want to criticize uh, to, to to say that uh, or rather criticize the elements of uh, uh, providing subsidies for fuel, you know, the common Mwanainchi does not mind about the subsidies. Mm -hmm. They only want, the, their effect lies on the basic, the very basic end of their consumption. Mm -hmm. Provided you just uh, provide the subsidy, the fuel subsidies, but I be cautioned from the impacts or rather from the effects of higher, you know, the, uh, the increased VATs on fuel. So the government, by it increasing uh, the VAT, I think it's trying to remove the caution from uh, you know the common one inch to the effects of the same, and it's not something good. We are still going to suffer, mm -hmm. uh, and as I said, we are still living in hard times, but we still hope for better days. You still hope for it. <laughs> I love that. So <laughs> Give me a, a very uh, interesting comment then. Yep. some hope at the end of it <laughs> there is a, there is hope uh, is it mm. hope or light at the end of the tunnel there's light at the end of the tunnel yes always uh now what are some of the positive uh things that have been uh proposed in the bill or in the budget what, what do you think are some of the good things uh, some i think there are very few mm -hmm. there are very few uh, because you realize that uh in fact uh President, presid the, mm -hmm. the president, uh, William Ruto's government, had promised that it will slash Uhuru's, the previous regime's budget by 300 billion. But we are just seeing, you know, the other way around. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, as we progress with this, the mm -hmm. demands become, you know, uh, uh, they, they grow, our demands grow. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we also need to review how we are spending as a country. We really need to review. Of course, there are things to do with, uh, you know, the betting. It's not. It's something that, uh, of course, I must appreciate from the finance bill. Mm -hmm. uh, again, issues to do with housing. It's a very, very nice idea, but not well thought about. You know, Someone so the needs government to. needs. It's a nice idea, but the government needs to review it, okay. so that in the long run, as we want to solve the menace. Uh, we want to solve issues to do with slums and whatever, the issues to, uh, surrounding housing, we are also not going to suppress those people who are mm -hmm. not interested in these houses. Those okay. people who are, you know, they are still suffering from economic constraints. So I think those are some of the things that the budget is trying to, to address. Issues to, I saw that the government has allocated a lot of money to the education sector. An empowered generation uh, through education mm -hmm. is a very, very, very strong future, uh, you know, encourages a very strong future, mm -hmm. an enlightened future, and, uh, and um, you know, a brighter tomorrow for a yeah. country like, uh, li like us. You know, like in the words of uh, Nelson Mandela who said that education is the only tool that a man can use to change the world. Mm -hmm. So once we, you know, invest in our education systems, our education programs, then it's going to be, you know, it's yeah. something that we must appreciate and embrace. So okay. that's another thing that the government must be lauded for. And uh, yeah. Okay. I think they also, there's also some positive aspects of it in the agricultural sector, mm. having that uh, on farm inputs, um, that is including pest control products and fertilizers, they will remain zero rated for VAT after the deletion of a proposal to exempt the product, uh, which would have resulted in higher costs for the inputs because that would have been a burden to the manufacturer, uh, which would, uh, you know, as a ripple effect, uh, affect the farmer. So I think that's one of the good things. Also on maize flour and sugar, what um, is being said is that they will remain zero rated for VAT. You smile, sorry if you have a comment on this. I'm uh, smiling because uh, uh -huh. how much are you buying sugar at? 400 and uh, something. Thank you. And it. that's a positive thing to you? <laughs> no, no, I'm just saying, uh, as a <laughs> what is being highlighted here, I mean, now it would pro probably mm -hmm. cushion from it being 
from it increasing in coming days. I don't know. <laughs> I stand guided. You stand guided <laughs> on that. So you're still saying that something needs to be done around I, that I, area. I, 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 uh, how I wish you had listened to the Cabinet Secretary for Treasury mm -hmm. uh, trying to propose an increase on the tax for, sh to, for sugar. Or saying, uh, saying that most Kenyans households, <laughs> yeah, most families sick. are suffering from diabetes. Well, <laughs> anyway, I just stand guided. <laughs> I think that was a, <laughs> on a low note on his defense. So I'm everything sure. should just be bitter. Really? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, on the budget allocation, um, just to take a look at it, a quick run through of it since we have really touched much on the finance bill. By the way, you just talked about agriculture, mm -hmm. and I remember the last time I was here, I was trying to propose this uh, when we had our last conversation. Mm -hmm. I proposed this, that, you know, issues to do with uh, pests, uh, pesticides and, uh, you know, chemicals to do in the farm inputs. Of course, it's a very nice idea. But the, in the coming next year, are we still going to talk about relief foods? for the people who are suffering in the northeastern parts of this country. Mm -hmm. Why can't we establish a fund, uh, you know, for you know, the initiation or rather for the establishment uh, of irrigation schemes mm -hmm. in those areas that are, you know, prone to, you know, drought, famine. And in the long run, our people die, their livestock, you know, succumb to the effects of drought and famine. So why don't we think about the long-term solution to these challenges. Mm -hmm. Instead of us every day coming uh, with, a, with a budget that addresses farm inputs, but we are still going to be faced by the menace come next year, a season like the one which we have just passed. You know, offering relief food, of course, it's something nice, but it, it's a short-term solution. Mm -hmm. So meaning next year, livestock are going to succumb to the effects of drought. So what are we doing as a country? And I think that's something mm -hmm. that the budget would have addressed. But anyway... What we'll do you think should, should be done in that area? That's why I'm proposing let there be established a fund okay. for the establishment of irrigation schemes to address you know, mm -hmm. the effects and the impacts of... Uh, you, just mitigating the effects Drought of... Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so that we are not going to hear that our people from Northeastern and our people from Trukana, they are dying because of lack of food. Let's empower them through irrigation schemes. And you know, through irrigation schemes, they, it's going to create employment, a long-term employment, by mm -hmm. the way, because people are going to be employed in those irrigation schemes, supervisors, those ones who are going to tend on uh, those crops that are going to be planted there. And we have uh, institutes in Kenya that can do research on what crops uh, are going uh, can be sustained in such kind of areas so okay. that uh, we are not going to be crying over the mm -hmm. same same issues year in year out. Year out. Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, very interesting there. On oh, budget allocation, finally, uh, out of the 3.6 uh, trillion, we have uh, the executive. Uh, which comprises of ministries, departments, and agencies receiving the bulk of the allocation at 2.16 trillion. The parliament, comprising of the National Assembly and Senate, receiving a total of 4.4 billion. The judiciary being allocated 22.99 uh, billion. The 47 counties will receive 385.4 billion. And uh, other expenditure items will be. Um, will be what is known as consolidated fund services allocated a total of 1.836 billion taking the total spending of the financial year 2023-2024 to 4.45 trillion what do you make of this how, how, is the allocation rightly divided okay the government has uh, has tried to you know to rectify or rather to try and uh, reason out about how uh, Kenyans are going to be you know sustained economically, mm -hmm. but I hope that the math will not create an aftermath okay. after this. Because let me ask you, in as much as we hear every day the county governments crying over, you know, mm -hmm. late disbursement of funds to them, at the same time, after they have received the funds, mm -hmm. there is still no medicine in the hospitals. After they have received the funds, the mm -hmm. roads are still poor. 
So the most important thing, and I will repeat this, ear in, ear out. Mm -hmm. It's just transparency and accountability for the funds that even, even if the disbursement is little, mm -hmm. let's just be accountable with that little. Uh, you know, uh, at the same time, mm -hmm. we also need to review, uh, and I, I, I think the budget did not address that, issues to do with how the government spends its uh, money or rather the resources on mm -hmm. luxury. These are some of the things that we need to think about, even in counties. So that in as much as uh, we want to save, we are also trying to be accountable yeah. for the money that we are collecting as a country, uh, the revenue that we are getting, mm -hmm. so that uh, service delivery uh, go is going to be boosted in you know, different parts of the country. But now if we have a, a budget of 4.4 trillion or whatever, but uh, in the long run, let's say half of that money cannot be accounted for, then why do we even need a budget? Okay. Yeah. So we need to see transparency and accountability. And one thing that I would want us as a country, I would pray, not want, because if I say that I, I want, I'm demanding. Well, but at the same time, I can demand because uh, a I'm a citizen of this country <laughs> and I reserve all the rights mm -hmm. uh, which are provided for under the law. There is a country called Singapore and they made a very quick U-turn in the economic transformation agenda. Mm -hmm. uh, and they, 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 they had their president, I think, I don't remember the name, but there was, there was a president, their leader, who developed a certain principle. Uh, it is called the MPH. I don't remember the P, mm -hmm. but the M stands for meritocracy. And the H stands for honesty. Employ people on merit. People who are conversant with the issues that affect the common wananchi, the issues that are ailing our country. And the H is the honesty, tell people the truth. Mm -hmm. There is no need for us to, you know, offer ourselves painkillers or rather caution ourselves from the reality, then in the future we end up suffering. Suffer. Employ people on merit mm -hmm. so that they can offer services. And you know, merit carries uh, also integrity, merit carries a lot of virtues. Mm -hmm. So if they carry, they combine these virtues with honesty, you tell people that this and this cannot be possible because of this and this. Mm -hmm. But we have our team of experts who have been employed on merit and who are ready to deliver what can be delivered. Okay. That is how we are going to solve the issues that affect our country. All right, yes. amazing. And uh, truly, I think uh, the country Singapore has been referred so many times in this conversation of the finance bill and the taxation and, and everything. And the leaders are comparing Kenya's economy to that of Singapore now, or, and even other African countries, um, saying that you know the average income of a Kenyan is 22,000, and you get somewhere like Singapore is 144,000. So you can't really compare the taxation uh, bit of it. But now uh, moving away from from that to how we're spending, you know, looking at how we spend. Uh, on the papers today, the SRC uh, sparks row with 10,000 uh, shillings pay rise for MCAs. Uh, <laughs> what is your comment on that as we come to a close on this conversation? Okay, uh, I will still argue it out that uh, how salaries are remunerated in Kenya mm -hmm. is still not fair. If you look at the work that uh, an MCA does, well, most people will argue it out that an MCA does, you know, nothing. Let's say nothing, because mm. that's what most people think. But I think that a salary of 154, or is it 144, it's not something that commensurates to the work that these people do. Adding 10,000, or rather, uh, uh, you know, a 10,000 pay rise to the MCA mm -hmm. is an injustice by itself. So you think that they need more? It is an injustice by itself. We need to review and have the MCA salaries be increased, you know, to a reasonable share in as much as, uh, of course, we are facing economic times. Exactly. The, the kind of work, the amount of work that these people do should be rewarded accordingly. All right. Because let me ask you, as an MCA, you are being paid 144,000. 
yet you are still invited for Harambis. <laughs> they have a lot. <laughs> in a month, you are invited maybe to 10 Harambis. 5,000, 5,000, that is 50,000. You are remaining with 100,000. You also need to go, uh, you know, trying to supervise the, the county projects in your respective ward. You realize that <laughs> you just don't live to the expectations of that office. Mm -hmm. Then in the long run, people will come and call you out and say that uh, when we had elected you, how could you panga? Mm -hmm. You know? So we also need to, to, to reason it out that it is not reasonable. 144,000 is not something that uh, we can, uh, you know, it's not something reasonable as per what the, uh, the salaries and uh, remunerations okay. commission is uh, advocating for. So okay. I'm against that personally. Wow, uh, a very interesting view on that. I didn't yeah. expect it. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> it is your personal view. Yeah. So now, uh, anything that you want to close with from the, from the whole discussion, and then you can give your handles in case someone wants to get you, that is your camera. Uh, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. I would still want to, to urge us as Kenyans, we still retain and reserve our power, you know, as provided under the constitution. That is article one, that all sovereign power belongs to the people. And where we feel that, uh, you know, we are being suppressed, our rights are being infringed, and uh, to do, uh, just to do with this, the financial bill, our economic rights are being infringed, then we retain the powers to exercise our mandate as Kenyans. But at the same time, let's try and uh, read through the finance bill. We say that it's not over until it's over. So please, mm -hmm. even the youths from every part of the country, they say that ignorance of the law is not defense. Ignorance of the knowledge is not defense. You cannot claim that you did not know what the finance bill entailed or rather, had carried. Mm -hmm. So we must read it through and react to it accordingly. And that is how we can contribute positively to the growth and development of our country, to the government. Mm -hmm. Please, please, please embrace the principles of accountability, fairness, efficiency, and uh, what is the other thing that I said? The, I, I, the other I principle. Mer yeah, <laughs> merit yeah. and But honesty. the most basic oh. thing is accountability for our funds. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Otherwise, I would want to greet uh, uh, the, all the students from Nakuru County. Mm -hmm. uh, may we continue uh, shining, may we continue growing, may we continue prospering. And to any student uh, undertaking any program, uh, mm -hmm. you know, in our country or outside the Kenyan territory, uh, let's continue embracing education and uh, fighting for a better future and a better country tomorrow. Wow, amazing. I can be found that, uh, mm -hmm. I'm, okay, <laughs> I am found that I am in Facebook at mm -hmm. Caleb Uno, U-N-O, Caleb Uno. Uh, on Twitter, we can engage at uh, Caleb Ikenye. Okay. Yes. Thank you very much, Caleb, for coming on board and sharing with us your great insights on this particular matter. We wish to have you again and again. It Kari is Musen. my pleasure. Thank All right, you. so uh, that has been the political co uh, political conversation on matters finance bill and its impacts to us, the youths, and everything that has been said here. You should know our personal opinions not tied to Y254 TV station. What do you have to say around this particular topic? Talk to us at Y254 channel using the hashtag Y in the morning. My name is Stephanie Ayeta. We're going to take a short break, and then Brand Sakwa is coming up with a very interesting discussion on. MCM.